Whenever you do laundry, do you ever have the baskets just sitting on the floor and in your way? Well, today I'm gonna show you how to build a real simple basket holder so we can get these up and out of the way. Let's do this. A few years ago, I made this laundry basket holder out of pallets. I mean, it was the going thing at the time, but there are a number of things I don't like about this. First off, it is heavy, even with no clothes in the baskets. So anytime we need to clean around it or behind it, it can be a little bit of a challenge to get out of the way. Next is the top. With these open slots, we are constantly dropping stuff down in there. And on occasion, clothes will get hung on these as we're trying to pull the baskets out. And it might be a little bit hard to tell on video, but I have a bunch of wasted space in between each of these baskets and on the top and the bottom. So I'd love to see if we can make it a little shorter, a little more compact. Here's a quick sketch of this holder. First off, a lot less wood on the bottom and back. We have a nice flat top and we've kept that open air concept that we enjoy. Now for the front and back legs, all these are are just boxes. So let's make those first. To build this project, I'm gonna be using one by fours because I already have these on hand. But if you don't, you could probably build these with one by threes, which could save you a little bit of money and they're probably a little bit lighter. Always remember when you're building something, there's a good chance you're probably gonna to have to square off the ends of your lumber, especially if you get it from a local home improvement store and that's what I'm gonna do now. Depending on the type of your baskets you have for your laundry, it might be a little bit different than this. But for the height of these legs, I'm cutting it at 33 and 3 quarters. And then for the top and bottom of the legs, we're going with 19 and a half. You're going to need a total of four of the legs and four of the top slash bottom. And if by chance you have splinters like I do on mine, just take some sandpaper and do some light sanding remove those. I'm also going to take some sandpaper and go along all these sharp edges just in case we bump into it in the future. It's less likely for us to get injured. Now if by chance you have a router and you want to just go over each of these, you can. You can do it really fancy, but again, this is a laundry basket holder. I'm not too worried about looking super fancy, so I'm just going to hit it with sandpaper. I put one of the legs in the shape of a box just to see how it's going to look and I believe it will work well. Now to put these together, I'm just going to use some simple butt joints and some glue and some screws going in from each end. It probably is not the strongest, but I think it'll be okay for this setup. It is also a good idea to pre-drill each of these holes to prevent these from cracking. I also did a countersink at each hole to help prevent cracking as well. Now that I have this set of legs together, just repeat the process for the second set. When I first started building this, I didn't want to make it very fancy, but I think I'm actually going to stain these legs in an ebony color, just to make them look a little bit more metallic, like metal legs that you'd find on a lot of tables, so let's try that. I also taped off the top section on each of these with the hope to actually stain these a different color. That way these can match the top color and then the legs can stand out. While we're waiting for that stain to dry, I'm gonna start cutting out the runners, the pieces that the actual baskets slide on. In my case, I need three at 22 and three quarters and two at 18. With these cut to size, I'm now gonna take them over to the table saw and actually gonna rip them in half. The reason why is we don't need this much wood to support some empty baskets. Even if they had clothes just packed on top of it, that is just overkill. So I'm gonna rip this in half and these will be the runners, plus it'll save a little bit of money on wood. Now, if you don't have a table salt, that's okay. You can always buy furring strips. The one by twos should do fine for the same concept. With the runners now cut to size, I wanna stain them a traditional cherry with the hopes that the ebony and this cherry will have a nice contrast. We'll see. And while I was at it, I stained the top of the legs and the color contrast is starting to really look nice. Next up, I need to figure out where to place the runners on the legs. And I believe if I come down about two inches from the top for the first runner, that should leave plenty enough room for the basket to slide in and out and hopefully give enough room for everything else. Then I'm gonna take a speed square and do a straight line right across where that two inch mark is. And that'll give me a guideline for the rails to sit on. Yes, that'll leave a mark on the inside of our legs, but it shouldn't be seen later. When installed, we'd like each of the runners to be nice and flush against the front of the holder. But on the back of the holder, we want each of the runners to be inset about the thickness of one of these boards. And that way we can have a back runner that gives support to not only the back of the runners, but also to the structure itself. When it comes to these rails or runners, I don't want to glue them to the structure just in case they ever happen to get broken, I can still replace them. So we're just going to use screws. So let me pre-drill some holes. I've now lined everything up, making sure the runners are square to the legs. I'm now going to hold some downward pressure on this runner as I pre-drill a couple holes. And to hold these in place, I'm just going to use some one and a quarter inch screws. 
And for the remaining two rails, I'm gonna measure down 13 and 24 inches and attach them the same way. Then I need to carefully flip this over and repeat the same on the opposite side. With the rails now in place, it's time to add those back supports. Not only will they help strengthen up the frame just a little bit, it'll keep the baskets from actually sliding out of the back. And one day, ah, they're actually a tad too long. That's what you get for pre-cutting everything. Let me show you. As you can see right there, it is just a tad too long, so we're gonna have to trim these down. It appears that I only need to cut off about a 32nd of an inch on each of these pieces to make them fit. Now, that can be really hard to do, so I'm gonna show you a little trick on a miter saw to make it really easy. Bring your miter saw in all the way to the down position, and then you wanna take your wood and bump it up against the blade, pushing inward on the blade. And once you have that, then hold the wood in a position so it doesn't move, lift up on the blade, the blade will now straighten out, and as you come back down, it will cut just a very small piece off of your wood. Of course, you may have to do that a few times to inch up on the exact measurement, but that's okay. At least you know you're only taking off a very minimal amount of wood each time. Now let's test this out. Perfect fit. So now I'm gonna pre-drill a hole and screw it right into the rail that's already installed, making sure to keep it nice and level. Now this holder is nearly complete, but before we go any further, let's see if we can test out the baskets to see if they'll actually fit. One. Two. Three, perfect. All right, now we can start working on the top. For the top of this holder, you can do a bunch of things. You can take solid wood, put it side by side, and create a nice firm top. You could use some plywood, or you could even use metal, whatever you have. I happen to have some three quarter inch birch plywood from a previous project that I'm gonna use for it. Now, of course, you don't have to have this. It's whatever you'd like. To make the sides of this plywood look a little bit better, I'm gonna use some edge banding, which you just iron on, and then just trim the excess off. And to make sure this would look right, I took a sample of the edge banding and I stained it just like I did the other wood and it matches really nice. Now that we have the edge banding ironed on and pressed into place, I'm gonna take a little edge trimmer and we're gonna remove this excess that's still sticking up so it'll be nice and flush for the top. The nice thing about edge banding, I accidentally messed up this cut when I was trimming it. All you gotta do is heat it back up with your iron and it will just peel right back off and you can apply some new. Now it's time to give it some stain. Sometimes you don't realize it when you stain plywood that it's gonna be real dark in some areas and real light in others, but that's okay. I believe I'm gonna make that the front and then this will be kind of towards the back. You won't see it nearly as much, but overall, I think it looked really nice. After giving this top some time to dry, we're going to flip it over and then we're going to install the frame while it is upside down. And after lining up the front, this will be the moment we'll know if it's out of square. I got that side lined up. This side over here is pretty close. You can see it just barely sticking out right there. Let's check out the back. This corner lines up almost perfectly. And this corner just a hair out on both sides. Maybe a 32nd of an inch. But that's not bad for freehanding this. It might be a little bit out of square, but that's okay. It's on the back side. That side will be against the wall and against the washing machine. I'm not too concerned about it being seen. So let's finish putting it together. And to hold the top secure, I'm just gonna add a one and a quarter inch screw at each corner. And there we have it. It is finally complete. Now let me go get the baskets and we'll see what it looks like with the baskets in it. And there we have it. It is looking great. Now the baskets fit in there nicely, which is a little bit of room in between each, just enough to get them in and out. Now if you notice here, they do stick out just a little bit in the front, but that's okay, because that allows for us to easily grab them. But they sit nice and level on those rails. Here's a quick comparison between the old one and the new one. It is over three inches shorter, sits back about two inches further, but ends up being about a half inch wider, but that's okay. Looking at the top, that one always had stuff fall through. This nice solid top, don't have to worry about that anymore. Overall, this project turned out great and it's gonna make a great addition to our laundry room. Now, I hope you can get out in your shop and have fun building.